This is grief counseling. Anyone's invited to speak. People meet me and they think, she's the woman whose nephew survived the plane crash. But they forget I'm also the woman who lost my big sister. She goes through some like really deep soul searching throughout this journey of hers. Um, were you satisfied with how her story pans out? Yes, but also <laughs> I was so excited to see where else it could go. Yeah. Because it's only a chunk of her life and so many things unfold. So I left the season being like, wow, oh my gosh, she has accomplished so much, but there are so many more things that could unfold in the future. Do you think that she actually kind of achieves that in the sense of finding her own self in the end? Mm -hmm. Or do you think she's got a long way to go? I, I mean, I think she will always be discovering more of who she is. But yes, I think she has a greater handle on it as the season continues, yeah. definitely. So the love story between Adriana and Kojo is one that kind of unfolds so purely. Mm -hmm. What was it like working with Idris to create that bond? He is such a good actor. <laughs> oh my gosh. First of all, he's British and I would completely forget every single day because his Ghanaian accent was so on point. I fully, fully believed him every yeah. single day. I believe every single word that comes out of his mouth. It was so easy. His character is so pure, so full of love, so earnest. Obviously this show deals with how grief manifests in different ways. And I think Dee Dee's way of dealing through it is like she powers through, but with this kind of delicate optimism with like teeny tiny pockets of rage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. What do you think her grief and process says about her? Well, you know, I always look at the characters that I play as a little bit every woman. And even though obviously Dee Dee's experience is not most women's experience, like having that kind of wealth and, you know, material, materialism and all that. Um, I still, I, I think that there's something about her process that feels very much like a women, a woman's experience. Like mm -hmm. she is really kind of playing by the rules of the life that she was given or the life that she chose and created. And then she has this experience of grief and loss, but she's holding on so tight to what she thinks the rules are, you know? And which is why she just like lets the, the rage out in these small pockets in small ways. Um, and I think ultimately her loss creates a self-discovery that allows her to access that much more than she would ever have if it hadn't happened, you know? Yeah. Obviously, her daughter, her relationship with her daughter Zoe is very fraught and tense. What caused that? Because we, it's never really explored how that came about. Well, I know it's it's that you know my sense of that is, and sort of looking at the relationship and the way Dee Dee built her life is like her daughter is kind of emblematic of all the parts of Dee, Dee that are, are and she's trying to keep undercover and her daughter is trying so hard to like live her, live in her own truth. Yeah. And that is almost like compromising to Dee, Dee because Dee Dee's so like living in behind this curtain, you know? And so it's interesting, like for me, because family relationships are, can be so fraught and can yeah. be so challenging. And you, in a, in a way, it's always it's really it's really interesting to explore what that's about, and I think it's because we see we we see each other and our family members so much, but that means we also have to see aspects of ourselves that we don't want to see. And I think, in the case of Audrey, the, the daughter character, like she does not want to see, like she does not want to see that this is. The, she has a part of that who her mother is and she does not want that you know what i mean yeah and vice versa like 
it's threatening for Dee Dee to see this kind of authenticity in her daughter mm -hmm. and be like, oh, that's threatening all of this structure that I've created, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I just think that that's always so fascinating to explore how families miss each other because mm -hmm. they're so threatening to each other, you know? Yeah. And what was it like working with Audrey to create that kind of complexity? Uh, it was, she was wonderful. She was so great and so game and so talented. So it was really fun to play with her. And like, you know, Jason gave us the freedom to explore and um, improvise. Um, and so we really, you know, and we wanted to be very specific about what it was that, you know, we. We didn't have a lot to do together, but we wanted to be really specific about this, these, these levels of mother-daughter tension that can exist and where they come from. It was really fun to play that out. What made you want to take on something so heavy, like work with such heavy material? Yeah, well, you know, I saw it as actually the potential to tell a story that was actually very life affirming. To me, it was about, you know, the story is really about, you know, resilience and the and and sort of the human spirit and 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 people's power to like the the power of people to kind of like um you know kind of evolve and change and grow um you know after you know this unfathomable event happens. And so that was the thing that really kind of you know inspired me. I also thought you know, it was, I, I was excited about to, to do a show that was dealt with, um, you know, hard stuff, dealt with grief and dealt with in, in doing in a way that could be raw at times, but all, also, but ultimately was a show that was to me feels, um, life affirming. I mean, I was re re really drawn to telling stories that, you know, um, where you felt like this community formed um in this unlikely way it it formed out of this out of this out of this terrible event but then you kind of watch people's lives transform and change and face things about themselves that they've never faced and etc and 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 you know there are love stories uh there are yeah. you know um in, you know really uh, you know we get to examine complex marriages and so there's very there's just a lot of things in it that really appealed to me and and felt the kind of thing that I I, I would I could sort of dig into and and mm -hmm. connected with the kinds of stories I tell but also felt like a new challenge for me. Yeah, I mean as well as being life affirming, it's also kind of a, uh, explores grief like different manifestations of grief. Yes. Um, what was it like working with the cast to create such powerful material? Uh, it's an incredible cast. Everybody to to everybody in it. I mean, to get to work with Connie again uh, was wonderful. Um, Taylor Schilling uh, is somebody that I've never worked with, but I've been such a huge fan of, and she has such um, depth, and um, she goes so deep um, in in her prep and the way she works, and it comes through in every scene. And and Colin O'Brien is um, some kind of you know, a uh, 13 year old genius, you know, um, he's, uh, he is just wonderful, you know, um, to work with. I have to keep reminding myself when we were on set talking about talking through scenes and stuff. I had to keep reminding my, 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 myself that, you know, you're, you're 12 years. This is, this, this is, yeah. this kid is 12 years old because he was so wise beyond his years. So, and, and the cast, you know, across the board, they were so wonderful. And one of the things that I was, you know, excited about it. it's like no two people deal with grief the same way. Mm -hmm. And um, I that's what that's what I thought was I was excited about in the show was to sort of have this big group of people, this big ensemble and watch them each, you know, deal with it in their own ways and have their own specific um, stories and their own specific ways of, of dealing with that with with with, with loss. So Dear Edward is just this beautiful, somber story. Were there any moments on set that were really impactful? Like what was the atmosphere on, on set like? Mm. Some of my favorite moments were in our grief group that we had mm -hmm. together. 
our plot lines were so separated. And so a lot of our interactions with one another were in the hair and makeup trailers. I'm like, hi, how are you? Hi, okay, bye. <laughs> and our grief group scenes were the one times where we all got to be together. And they were just such fun days. Yes, it was grief group. Yes, we're grieving, of course. But we all really liked each other and we all just like to crack jokes and like be goofballs. And so it was the one time where we could just get it all out finally. Yeah. Because when we're in our individual plot lines, you know, we're alone. <laughs> but yeah. in these grief groups, our, our director, Allison, um, she did episodes two and three. She was the first person to introduce the grief group to us because that's mm. where it begins. And our first grief group scene, she said, hi, I'm Allison. Welcome to grief group. I want this to be a place where we honor our dead. I want this to be a place where the people who have passed get to be heavy on our hearts today mm -hmm. and are with us in this space because we all know what grief feels like and we've all lost someone at some point during the road. And so does that mean it was sad? No, we were laughing and cracking jokes constantly, <laughs> but it was like a beautiful, I keep calling it an altar to honor those who have passed. I lost my grandmother a few years ago. And so I got to think of her every single time I was in grief group and, and swap stories and things like that. And so those were my, those were my cherished most favorite memories. Any, I always feel like season two is always a possibility. Do you think there will be a season two? Have there been talks amongst the cast of doing a season two perhaps? I think everybody would love to do a season two. So, um, you know, it's always that thing where you just see how, well, let's see how the show is received. And I think, you know, having talked to Jason about it, I think he definitely always had in mind that these characters could go on and we have more stories to tell that, that could really touch on all of these themes in a great way. So we'll see. Well, it resonated with me in a big way. And like I was saying to Jason, I cried through about 80% of watching Dear Edward. Oh, you did. <laughs> were there any moments when you were filming that you thought these were, these are going to be really impactful moments or that meant something to you? Um, yeah, like I really, you know, there's that scene um, in the kitchen where Dee Dee kind of, goes back and retraces how she and her husband had met and mm -hmm. who they were. And she lets herself be really vulnerable there. And she's really trying to understand how she got there, which to me felt like such a brave moment for her as a character, because mm -hmm. it's hard for her to look at that with a, with a really naked eye. And, um, I loved that moment because I've certainly had moments in my life where I've had to like do a real reckoning with myself about like, what's the truth in my life? Where do I come, you know, where did I come from? How did I get to this place? And I think that's a very fundamental human experience. And mm -hmm. so I always think it's really helpful to see a character doing that thing that's so hard Mm. and realize like, oh, okay, I, I could do that too, you know? I agree. Um, who is Dee Dee at the end versus who she was at the beginning? Like, who is this new Dee Dee that we're finding? I think that the Dee Dee at the end is the Dee Dee who was at the source of, of, of it all from the beginning, but maybe got left behind because she was so focused on this relationship with her husband and all of the trappings of that. And so she just let that be her identity. And so there's a lot of crossover there. I think that, you know, she's she still has the same heart. And what I loved about playing Dee Dee even in the beginning is that she really is such an open-hearted person. Mm -hmm. And so, but I but I think in the end, she realizes that she herself standing alone in the world has more strength than she did standing in sort of the identity of who she was only in regards to her husband, you know? So that's, yeah. that's a big, powerful moment for her. Edward and Shay have this really uh, special relationship. What was it like watching Eva and Colin kind of create that special bond? 
Well, it was great. And I would say that that relationship, when I read Anne Napolitano's novel, which was so beautiful, mm. it's that relationship that really inspired, really wanted me to, you know, um, do this show. I just loved their relationship. And um, with, you know, um, Colin and Ava, you know, um, it was, uh, it was sort of magical, you know, it was kind of like, first of all, I think they were very important to each other because they were, you know, they were both child actors on set with, around a lot of adults. Yeah. And so it was kind of, they, it made them even closer and they had the most beautiful friendship together. Um, and it was, um, you know, which, which made it, you know, even more fun to do the, you know, the scenes together. I think, I think Colin was saying the hardest thing for him was to do scenes with her where they had to fight because they were so, they were so close oh. to each other. Um, but I just love that relationship. I should have said when you asked which scenes were moving, like when, <laughs> when, when he, when he asked to sleep over and he's laying there and the pillow, you know, she throws the pillow down <laughs> and throws the blanket down. I just like, that was one of my, um that scene was was one of the was sort of like one of the defining scenes for me about the show is it, it that was like the one that i was like when i you know like when you first start doing a show you first start writing it you kind of like look for things to grab onto like what's the show gonna what's gonna be great in the show what's this gonna be about and that was a scene that i early on held on to i can't wait to i can't wait to do that scene well it plays off um mm -hmm. What are your hopes for Dear Edward beyond the first season? Well, you know, um, first of all, I'm just, you know, I'm excited for the launch of this season. I'm trying to live in the yeah. moment. I'm working on that. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think that, you know, when I think about, to me, when I think about like shows uh, and, and whether, um, you know, you want to do more seasons, I think, are these characters characters that are live to me that I want to write about that I want that I feel there's more story to tell and I absolutely feel that way I think that the show is set up to be a story um about these characters that goes way beyond just um just this this season um and um I have already lots of ideas and thoughts of where it can go but right now you know it's 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 you know it's kind of early days and I'm just kind of trying to you know kind of like um enjoy this moment of the show finally kind of people finally be able to see it.